birth of Jesus that 5,550 years has passed. Now, let me just drive up a stake right here and tell you something that's very, very, very important, and that is this, that they use the Septuagint version of the Scripture to make that calculation instead of the Jewish calendar. Had they used the Jewish calendar, and we now know how long it's been, right? Everybody here can probably tell me from, the birth, from Adam to the birth of Jesus how many years it was. It was a little about 4,000 years. Now, if you look at this, they, some, for some reason they went to the Septuagint. And what the Septuagint is is this. The Septuagint is the Old Testament translated to the Greek language. All right? And it was done long before Jesus came and was born in Bethlehem. For some reason, these early fathers miscalculated by 1,500 years when Adam had been created to the birth of Jesus. It's actually about 404 B.C., uh, that uh, 4,004 years from Adam to Jesus, but the early fathers missed it. Now think about this. They added 1,500 years to the calendar. Now here's what began to happen. I want to give you a quote. Quote, and this is an early father. From the birth of Christ, then, we must reckon that 500 years remain to make up the 6,000 years, and thus the end will be. Now, I could get into some, to some real heavy theology here and some real heavy debating, but let me make it very, somebody say, make it simple. Make it simple. And I want to make it, because I've got detailed notes, and the deeper we go, we're going to run out of time. So I want to keep it simple. Here's basically what happened. Based on uh, Hippolytus' miscalculation of 1,500 years, they began to teach that by the 5th century, all things would end that by the 5th century the kingdom would be set up on earth, that by the 5th century it would be 6,000 years from Adam to the 5th century. Now watch what begins to happen. All of a sudden, oddly enough, the political Roman Empire started collapsing. When the political Roman Empire pastors started collapsing, then something began to happen in the church. The Christian church under Constantine came to power. Christians were persecuted for three centuries. Constantine came along, legalized Christianity, sent his mother to the Holy Land to mark all the holy places. Uh, it became, he then took a uh, moot from Rome and went to Turkey, to Constantinople, Turkey, another city on seven hills, and built what was called the New Rome and set up what would be called the Byzantine Empire, which lasted for a thousand years. Now, let me go ahead in time. When you come to the third, fourth, and by the fifth century, Jesus still hadn't come back. So the 6,000 years were up in the minds of the early fathers. So then you have an early father by the name of St. Augustine that writes a book called The City of God. And in this city of God, in, in the book he wrote, he makes the book of Revel Re Revelation an allegory. In other words, no longer is it a book about the future. It's not about a future beast. It's not about an antichrist per se, even though you can apply it to that. It's about a battle of good and evil. Jerusalem is the city of God. Babylon is the, is the false system. And so there's a battle between Babylon and Jerusalem. So he allegorizes the whole book of Revelation. And here's the reason why. Because Jesus didn't show up. Now, you've got to catch this. This gets interesting. So then the Roman church, it, 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 was, it was called then the Catholic church, still is, but the Roman Catholic church under the popes then decided, wait a minute, we've read the book of Revelation wrong. The 1,000-year reign with Christ, it reads to say, we, we, will rule, we will rule and reign with Christ. They then began to teach that there wasn't a physical return, that the church would set up the kingdom on the earth for a thousand years. In other words, for one thousand years, the church will be present Christ. Now, this is where you get to, into the idea where the Pope was no longer the spiritual leader. He was the vicar of Christ. He was Christ on earth. Can everybody understand this? And so you have to understand that in that day, because they, they miscalculated by 1,500 years, they had to come up with something to tell their followers, well, how have we missed it? Oh, we've not missed it. We are ruling, reigning with Christ because the church is Christ's representative on earth. Our leader is Christ's embodiment on earth. So then you get into what we call replacement theology, and it would be called, called kingdom now. Now stay with me, because this gets really, it gets deeper. Can you believe it? Yeah. Hope I've got time to share all this with you. Now here's what begins to happen. So from the 5th century on, the Roman church began to set up the kings and the, and the, the leaders and world leaders. In 800, Charlemagne came along and tried to reform the Roman Empire again. He did not succeed. So all of a sudden... Do you know what messed up this kingdom? Do you know what messed up this 1,000-year kingdom of peace the church is trying to set up? Are you ready? A, a man by the name of Muhammad in the desert of Arabia. <laughs> 
because he came up with the Quran and the Islamic religion, and suddenly Islam begins to fight, fight uh, the traditional Roman church, and so they're fighting each other, and then you start getting into all these wars of the Holy Land, then you get into the Crusades, you get in where the Muslims have taken the Holy Land, then the uh, tr traditional European Christians come in and battle them, and they take the kingdom back. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to set up the kingdom. They're trying to set up the kingdom. Jesus hadn't shown up. So they're trying to set up a kingdom. They still think there's going to be a thousand years of peace. Well, what really got messed up is after a thousand years from the 5th century to the 1500s, the Tur Turkish Empire crushed the Byzantines. Now what you're going to do? The thousand years are up and Jesus still hadn't showed up. Well, all of a sudden, another country comes to power called England and Britain. Brit-ish. Brit-ish. The pure form of the word. Brit is the word covenant. Ish means man. And British means covenant man. And that's why the British have always said they're descendants of the Jewish people of the tribe of Dan or, or different tribes. And I don't want to get into all that, but some of them believe that. Now watch carefully. So King James in 1611 prints the English translation of the Bible. All of a sudden, Britain becomes the empire on earth. Suddenly they're presenting the gospel. They're sending missionaries all over the world. And they thought, we're going to set up this kingdom. We will set up that kingdom of Christ on earth. But guess what? Something messed it up, a little country called America. You know, the whole thing kept getting messed up, you know? The whole thing kept getting messed up. And so America comes along. Now, here's the quotes I want to give you to show you what Americans believed in 1812. Follow me carefully. In 1812, there was a prophecy that said the tabernacle of Zion, the tabernacle of God will soon be pitched among men. In 1812, Levi Parsons said, quote, Zion will prosper, speaking of Americans influencing Palestine, because Israel was Palestine back then. 1815, a Connecticut minister said, we have now entered the period to prepare for the millennium. See, they got this idea, we're going to set up a thousand-year reign. In 1819, the first Protestant missionaries left Boston for Palestine to restore the Jews to their land and win souls. 1842, missionaries from America established the first Christian schools in Lebanon and Istanbul, a college called Roberts College. In 1862, the first Protestant school was set up by American missionaries in Syria. In 1881, American Christians set up the American Colony Hotel. In fact, we had a great dinner there the other night, didn't we? <laughs> uh, in Jerusalem. All right, now stay with me because this is very, very important. Two other major teachings started rising to power once America came on the scene because America understood we had a role to play. But they missed the idea. Part of the role was help the Jewish people restore Palestine. That, started, that teaching started in 1812, but that's not the only uh, time that we see people interested in the restoration of of, of what we would say today, Israel. Watch what happens. In 1810 to 1820s, there was a teaching of restorationism, which was believed by President Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, Teddy Roosevelt, and President Wilson, in which we were to help restore Christ's rule on the earth, you listening? America, through the gospel. Then the Manifest Destiny teaching came in 1840, and it was a Puritan idea that America was the new promised land, and that we had a divine assignment, again, to help spread the gospel around the earth, and to help restore the nation of Israel. Now, what messed us up trying to set up this 1,000-year kingdom was the Civil War. When the Civil War happened, Pastor, it blew this whole teaching on the fact that we're going to set up a kingdom, because now the country split. But after the Civil War, there were two men, D.L. Moody and Charles Finney, and when they got together, they had a meeting to decide where have men gone wrong, for since the time of the, very, the, the early stages of the Roman church, they've tried to set up a thousand-year reign, and they keep failing, and they came to a conclusion. Everybody ready? You can't have a kingdom till you have the king. Amen. <laughs> And then when they started preaching about the king will return, the actual king, we're not, we're not the kings, we're kings and priests, but he's the king, their, their whole st the songs start changing. Yeah. We are watching for the coming of that glad millennial day when the blessed Lord shall come and call his blessed bride away. Oh, my heart is, I forgot it. <laughs> Filled with rapture as I labor, watch and pray. For our Lord is what? Coming, coming back, back to earth again. again. Then they start teaching the coming of the Lord. So when people say to me, well, you know, that teaching of the rapture didn't start till the 1800s. That's right. It's in the Bible. It's been in the Bible. It's revealed in the scripture. But the way they miscalculated 1,500 years threw everything completely off theologically. And God in the last day said, 
Things, certain things have to happen to rebirth the idea of the return of Christ. Number one is the reign of the Holy Spirit. Number two is the restoration of Israel as a nation. Number three, Psalms uh, chapter 102 says, when the Lord builds up Zion, which is Jerusalem, he will appear in glory. Number four, Jeremiah says the Jews have to return back to Israel. Number five, there has to be return of the latter rains. And in the past 60 years, everything I just told you has happened. It was not happening in the 1600s. It wasn't happening in the 1700s. It wasn't